these um, these metaphorical meanings that these people were trying to stick mm -hmm. in order to, you know, mess with the Quran, say, yeah, we negate everything, but we don't disbelieve in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's that <laughs> was that was their way of wiggling. It, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, comes the Kullabiya, they use those same principles, mm -hmm. but they try to reaffirm the apparent meanings of the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm -hmm. However, however, whatever they could not reconcile, they mm -hmm. had to concede. So you see, the, and this is why the Salaf made Tabdi on the Kullabiya, mm -hmm. because it's like, guys, all right, so far here, it's all good. You mm -hmm. guys have disproven the Mu'tazila with their own weapons. Mm -hmm. But when you can't do it, instead of saying, and at this point here, we just got to go with the Quran and the Sunnah, despite we not can't, you know, we can't use your tools to prove it right. We still yeah. got to go with the Quran and the Sunnah. No, you stuck to the tools. Yes, exactly. <laughs> revelation. Yeah. Okay. And this is why Imam Ahmad, was harsh upon Ibn Kullab and Al Harith al Muhasibi. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Now here comes Abu al Hassan al Ash'ari. Mm -hmm. Okay. Abu al Hassan al Ash'ari. He was um, he was a, a descendant of Abu Musa al Ashari, the companions, mm -hmm. but he was an orphan. And mm -hmm. after his father passed away, uh, he, his mother remarried uh, Abu Ali al Jubai, who was the head of the Mu'tazila in Al Basra. Mm -hmm. All right. So imagine he grows up in the household of the head of the Mu'tazila in Al Basra. Yeah. Of, it was the second stronghold of Al Mu'tazila. Mm -hmm. And which period is this now? Which which period in terms of this is now? This is now uh, 260. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now look, basically the Muhaddithin, like the, the the golden era of the Muhaddithin, is gone. It's gone. Yes. Bukhari and Muslim have passed away. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and and things are and and the the time of the Atba'at Tabi'in is done as well. Look here. Mm -hmm. At Ba'at Tabi'in are gone, Bukhari and Muslim are gone, mm -hmm. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari is still around, mm -hmm. um, and here comes Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, he was groomed to take over the Madhab after al-Jubbai. Mm -hmm. uh, al-Jubbai was grooming him to become the next number one of al-Mu'tazila. Yeah. So, uh, most of the, the, the biographies of, of, um, of al-Ash'ari they say that he was on Etizal for 40 years. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, one of the best studies uh, on the, on the Ash'ari Madhab, which is done by uh, Abdurrahman al Mahmoud, uh, he claims that most likely what it is, he was on Etizal until he was 40 years old. Mm. Right? Because somehow the numbers don't add up if you say 40 years. Yeah, exactly. So, if they say 40 years, yeah, yeah. Not like mm. from age 15 till age 55, all right? Yeah, yeah. So after reaching deep, deep uh, levels of Etizal, uh, he hid a wall mm. and he disappeared for days. Like he was in doubt. Mm. He has all these principles in his head and all this, what if, and if we say that, then it necessarily implies this, but then how come and blah, 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 blah. Mm. He just, you know, he, he blacked out. Yeah. Then after some say about two weeks, he came out after Salat al Jumu'ah, he went on the minbar and he obviously he was a superstar okay he was the number one of the mu'tazila which were like the sect in charge put in charge by the abbasi leaders mm -hmm. um and he said yo i abandoned the mu'tazila madhab the way same way as i pull off my thobe and he pulls off his thobe and he throws it away <laughs> yeah yeah, and, yeah yeah and you know he, he puts his he brings a bunch of new books he had written over that time and mm -hmm. these this these books reflect what i believe now take them and distribute them yes so this was like a big show, like mm -hmm. you, you can imagine mm -hmm. that this was the talk of town after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so Abu and, Hassan, and, and just to put it in perspective, right? Yeah, you're talking about somebody again who is coming from the house of the leader 
of the Mu'tazila, which means that he has very high status, not just religiously, but even on a, you can even see on a political scale, it would make a, a massive, massive um, uh, exactly. impact, right? Exactly. Right? So, and now he has this, this thing, there's no TV at this time, but the yeah. way that he did it, because he's, remember, Abu Hassan Alashi is very articulate. He's very, yeah. you know, like he can talk, okay? He, like, yeah, yeah. You know, he, yeah, he's very, very convincing. So you're matching that with his rhetoric now with this 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 public spectacle of him take, uh, taking off this thobe and everything and just the actions. It's going to do something to the people and, and mobilize them to be quick in, in essentially, because these are his followers. They're going to be qu very quick to try to spread his his new uh, way of thinking, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. And, that, that's, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And um, the thing is that uh, in hindsight, what was Abul Hassan upon in these mm -hmm. new writings that he has spread? There's only one that's left from that day is a Luma. Most of the mm -hmm. most of, of, of his uh, of the people who wrote about his biographies, uh, they say that most likely uh, the the book Al Luma. We only have five books of his left. Al Luma. Mm -hmm. Maqalat uh, al Al Ibana, Risala al Ahl al Thaghr, and another one where, where he's justifying Ilm al Kalam. Okay? Mm. Luma is from that day. It's his oldest book, okay, that, that we still have around today. Basically, he was on the madhab of Ibn Kullam. Yes. That that's, why, that's why you mentioned him in the beginning. beginning exactly. Right? So, just to make the connection, right, the Mu'tazila, they used Ilm al Kalam to basically negate. negate the ayat or you know the challenge the ayat in the hadith right exactly but the, the kulabiya what they were doing is that they were saying okay we're going to use your tools that you use but we're not going to negate we're going to use this to protect and to make an argument f for the ayat on the hadith right that's right that's right so basically right. abul hassan al-ashari he be he's using the same method of the kulabiya Exactly, exactly. Correct. So they're obviously going to have some, 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 uh, some notable differences, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, like, the, the essence is there. Like, everything I said here, you know, it, it works for the Kulabiya and it works for the Ashariya, mm -hmm. right? So whatever he could not reconcile, he stuck to this principle of, 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 of Ilm al-Kalam mm -hmm. instead of sticking to the... the ayat of, or the Hadith. Yeah. Okay. However... Mm. That was not the end of it. Mm. Abul Hassan al Ashari, like at this stage, he had reinvented himself mm. and he embarked on a new um, on a new journey of mm. studies with different people, and, and there was an evolution from that point onwards. Mm -hmm. All right. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it. You'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs>